Chapter 7 Once Upon a Time in Siberia In the summer of 1991, when the Soviet Union was cracking apart at the seams, but the people didn't seem to care much about that, the entire country was standing in queues for food at stores with empty stalls. And I walked along the central street, minding my own business, when all of a sudden I was called out by the two girls I knew. And there were three guys with them I had never seen before, one of whom was holding an open bottle of vodka exactly the way you would hold a bottle of beer. To me, it was a bit strange way to vodka, way too strong even for us, the Russians. That made some sense to me when the guys turned out to be Americans with a translator. At the time they came along, they stopped being exotic here. Our oil industry hoped to use them to get modernized, and our pretty girls had now a good chance for a good marriage and get the fuck out of the shit they were in. So the collapsing USSR was starting its honeymoon with America back then. So I met my first two Americans and a translator who turned out to be my countrymen from the same region in the south. I don't remember their names though. Well, maybe I remember the tall blonde guy with his name John Shufford. He was the one holding up the bottle of vodka, handing it out to me to take a drink from it. I didn't. It wasn't the way we drank vodka. Not from a bottleneck, anyway. After some awkward pauses and reflections, girls weren't sure what they were going to do with those Americans they just had hooked up when I came in we decided to go to our dorm room. I would show them how this grand serpent would be properly handled. That's how the drunkenness is allegorically called in Russia. On the way to our dorm, I had a little chit-chat with my bad English with Americans, mostly on where they had come from and what they were up to in here. I could speak with them about these with relative ease and the girls seemed to be impressed with me. I asked them how they liked our girls, just like that. They said they were lovely. The translator was a bit surprised with my not-so-bad English here in the middle of nowhere. The Americans came here from Texas, and they would be drilling for oil here. When we got to my place, my dorm roommates in the dorm were lost a little bit. It's not every day the Americans show up like that. Nevertheless, to our guys' credit, they quickly arranged a dessert and a snack, so we had something to vodka they had brought. All were seated at a table in front of an antediluvian black and white TV set, without its back cover and with the tubes exposed from inside, and with pliers resting in front of the TV set we used for the going channel switch handle to switch between the two only available in USSR TV channels. Our American friends gazed around our room with curiosity. Our room walls were covered with posters with barely dressed models on them. We love girls, I said to John, nodding at them. Playboys, huh? He played along. Oh yes, I nodded, not entirely sure, however, what the word playboy meant. We drank to our friendship. We were young and capable boys and were able to drink without getting carried away and getting drunk for that matter. Then we all smoked joints. Americans with genuine surprise looked at Russian Belamor Canal mouthpiece cigarettes which were very good for rolling a joint as if they were specially designed for this. Actually, there was no need to roll them, just start them up with the weeds and how fast and smartly, several cigarettes at a time, our guys stuffed the cigarettes. It was still before the time many of our dorm guys switched to black stuff and heroin. It all was yet to come. It was funny to see how our guys and Americans were passing around their joints in doing shotgun weeds to each other communicating with clear gestures like go ahead, enough, etc. doing this. As if they were doing this the entire life together in our gang. Moved, one of our guys out of his hospitability heart even tried to arrange horse for the guests. 
and Americans got jumpy, joyfully mimicking sexual intercourse, as if saying, we're going to have a really good time. I was amazed. I had no idea that we had such identical gestures, and that we had so many things in common. It didn't work out with hearts, though, but we gave them weeds and a lot of stuffed cigarettes, saying to be careful with our police, though, they normally don't mess with Westerners, but still, and gave them a lift to their hotel. I'd never seen them again, but the dorm guys said they had been in there a few more times when I was at work in the oil field. What a shame! I was looking for every opportunity to practice my English.